Hey guys, it's Mr. Thompson, uh, and I'm coming to you here from today uh, on the beach to talk to you a little bit about what you see behind me. We're going to be talking about solutions today. Uh, I'm going to introduce you guys to some new vocabulary. Uh, not going to be any calculations in this one, but on the next video, we'll definitely have some more formulas that we'll go. So let's take a look at some of this. Let's jump right over to that PowerPoint right now. Okay, so like I said, there's going to be a lot of vocabulary in this unit, so let's go ahead and we're going to start by just what are solutions. Solutions are homogeneous mixtures that contain two or more substances. Homogeneous, remember, means that they are the same composition throughout. They look like they're one thing. Uh, solutions contain two substances, and these are words you're going to want to get used to seeing. A solute, which is a substance that dissolves into it, and a solvent, which is the dissolving medium. So for example, if I were to think about making iced tea and I were going to pour sugar into that, then the iced tea is my solvent. It is what I am mixing stuff into. And the sugar is my solute, which I'm going to dissolve into the tea so that it tastes better. Uh, we often think of solutions as liquids, and, and most of them are, but you can also have solutions that are gas or solid or part of, you know, part liquid, part solid, things like that. Now, solvation is the process of dissolving solute particles into solvent particles to produce a solution. A lot of vocabulary there. Solvation is just basically you're mixing two things to form the solution. Okay? And if a solute does dissolve into the solvent, it is said to be soluble. If it does not, it is insoluble. Okay? And if we are doing this with water, that's called hydration, which should sound familiar to you because you know, we know to hydrate means to put water in. So how do we know? Well, how do we know if something's going to dissolve into something or not? Well, we had a discussion earlier in the year about polar and nonpolar molecules. Some molecules have a positive and negative side, and some are just equal on both sides. Things like water, salt, sugar, are, they're, those are polar. Oil is an example of something that is nonpolar. Okay? Uh, and the reason why this is important is because when we talk about things dissolving into other things, all you have to remember is that like dissolves like. So, for example, sugar, which is polar, dissolves in water, which is polar, very easily because of that fact. Like dissolves like. Ionic compounds, for the most part, are polar, and they easily dissolve in water, mostly. Okay? Oil, however, is nonpolar. And so oil doesn't dissolve in water. You've seen this before where you see the oil separate and, and sit in a different location than the water. Now, some ions do not dissolve in water simply because their attractive forces are way too strong and water can't break them apart. Okay? No solvation, no solution. So, for instance, if I mix oil and water and they don't, you know, oil does not dissolve into water, I had no solvation there. If I don't have any solvation, that is not a solution. That's just oil on top of water. Now, just because, like I said, two compounds are, are polar does not guarantee one will dissolve into the other. So, for example, for those of you, if you really like iced tea and you really like it extra sweet, you may, you may grab a couple of sugar packets. Even if they brought you sweet tea, you may get some more. Okay, Dumping all those packets into the iced tea won't get you all the way, though. Okay, it, if you don't do something to that tea, that sugar is just going to sit there in chunks on top of your tea. Okay, what would you have to do? You need to stir your tea. So there are some things that are going to help us dissolve chemicals into solutions easier. And we got to see this today during the demonstration that I did in class. Stirring was one of the ways to dissolve things, but it wasn't the only way. So for example, I could drop a, a whole sugar cube into a cup of coffee or hot tea, and it will dissolve, and it, it'll, it won't take very long to do that. But if I wanted to dissolve it even faster, there's something else I can do besides just stirring. We saw this when I took the Alka-Seltzer. I crushed it up. If you break it apart before you put it in, it will dissolve even faster than if you just leave it in that huge cube or chunk form. Okay, And, and then, of course, just if we think about hot and cold tea, sugar dissolves way faster in hot tea than it does in cold tea or in coffee or anything that you're familiar with that's a hot beverage. So we have three factors that will speed up solvation. We can agitate it. That's where you stir it or you shake it. You know, we can agitate the mixture. 
we can increase the surface area of the solid. That's like when I break apart that sugar cube and it, it's, it now has a bigger area that it can cover than when it was just in the little cube form. And finally, we can of course increase the temperature of the solvent so we can heat up the water and it will, it will dissolve in way faster than if it was cold. Now, solubility is the maximum amount of solute that we can dissolve into something, okay? You cannot just dump sugar into a uh, solution over and over and over and over and, and it all dissolve. Eventually, you're going to get sugar crystals that are going to reform and they're either going to sink to the bottom or they're going to float to the top, okay? If you put too much in there, it's not all going to dissolve. A saturated solution contains the maximum amount of dissolved solute uh, for a given t temperature and pressure. And that's important because if we change the temperature and pressure, we can change the amount we can put in there. If a solution is unsaturated, then it contains less than the maximum. It, could, it contains less than a saturated solution would at that same temperature and pressure. It is possible for you to put more solid, or for, I'm sorry, not for you to put, but for a solution to have more solid in it than it should have. I know that seems kind of weird, but we call that a super saturated solution. It contains more dissolved solute than a saturated solution. Okay, so how is that possible? Well, the higher the temperature, the more you can dissolve into a solvent. So for example, if the higher the temperature of water, the more sugar I can put into it. And I can just keep dumping sugar, keep dumping sugar. Okay, whereas if it was ice cold, I wouldn't be able to get as much before it started sinking to the bottom. Okay, so if I get it really hot, I can get a lot of sugar in there. Then, once I've got that sugar in there and it's dissolved, if I cool it down slowly, that sugar will remain dissolved in that water, even though it shouldn't be, okay? It will actually remain dissolved until I do something to get it out. So for example, let's say I'm making some iced tea and I wanna make this sweet iced tea. So I'm heating this up and when it gets good and hot, I'm gonna dump all kinds of sugar into this drink. Just dump, 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 keep stirring, keep stirring, keep stirring, and dump. Once I cool it back down, that solution is super saturated. We have super saturation has occurred. So just a little bit more on this. Like I said, temperature can affect saturation. Some things I can't dissolve a solute into that solvent until we get it to a higher temperature. Okay. Now pressure can also affect solubility. And this is something you experience, some of you, daily because, for instance, carbon dioxide is dissolved into soda, and they use it at high pressure and low temperature to get the, the carbon dioxide into that liquid and to get it to stay there. But when you open the can, the pressure on the outside is higher than the pressure on the inside. The pressure decreases inside, which allows CO2 to leave the solution to come out, and that's that pss sound that you get when you open a soda. A lot of vocabulary there, ladies and gentlemen. I know that seemed like a, quite a bit. There's going to be some more, but all you, all you need to do, get this written down, try to start becoming familiar with these terms so that when I use them in class, I say solute or solvent, you understand what I'm saying. I'll see you guys tomorrow. We'll work on it in class then.